is what I beseech Keep in my heart your remembrance And in your deen allow me to advance Help me in my quest Permit me to pass the ultimate test Help me in my quest Permit me to pass the ultimate test Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back to another live edition of Ask Huda. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala nabihi wa mustafa wa ba'd. My dear viewers, the following are our phone numbers and the contact informations beginning with the area code 002 then 0109 518-5170 alternatively a record 002 then 0100-546-9323 and the whatsapp numbers the first one is a record 001-347-806-0025 and finally a record 001-361-489-1503 um, we'll be more than happy to start collecting your phone calls inquiries and questions We'll do our best to answer them, insha'Allah. First question is from Rokshana Omi. She's asking, can you help me by providing the whole process of istikhara? Of course. I would be more than happy to do that. Um, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the sound hadith, if any of you is about to do something serious, something important, then he should consult Allah the Almighty in this matter, whether to do it, or not to do it. Serious like marriage, divorce, travel, investment, selling and buying something valuable, uh, studying in this school or that school, and so on. So before you make the decision, إِذَا هَمَّ أَحَدُكُمْ بِالْأَمْرِ Before you actually execute the idea, it's just a plan. An intention or you like to do it so you consult Allah the Almighty whether to proceed towards it or to seize let him pray two rakahs which are not mandatory other than the fard prayer we all understand that the fard prayers which consist of two rakahs is either Fajr or Jumu'ah so no you must pray two rakahs nafila and the good news is it could be nafila that I'm actually praying on a regular basis such as the emphatic or non-emphatic sunnah before or after the prayers or any of the night prayers to rakahs or the duha prayers and then thumma liyakul then let him say the following supplication اللهم إني أستخيرك بعلمك وأستقدرك بقدرتك فإنك تقدر ولا أقدر وتعلم ولا أعلم وأنت علام الغيوب. The first segment consists of words of praises, exalting the Almighty Allah and seeking His help and His guidance in this respect. Oh Allah, indeed, here I'm seeking your consultation and your guidance in your knowledge, in your power. You have knowledge and I have none. You are able to do all things and I'm not able to do anything. And then after you praise the Almighty Allah, you present the subject of your istikhara. You want to marry this person or you have a proposal and you don't know whether this guy is going to be good or not. Somebody proposed to your daughter so the girl would pray istikhara. Oh Allah, if you know in your knowledge, in your infinite knowledge, that this person is going to be good for me as a husband, in respect of my worldly life and the hereafter, then make it easy for me to marry him and facilitate our marriage and bless us. But if you know this choice is bad and you know that in the knowledge of the unseen with you, then take it away from me and take me away from it and then decide for me what is good and make me be pleased with it. So the dua besides praising and exalting Allah the Almighty is you put your choices with Allah to choose for you. Oh Allah, 
إن كنت تعلم أن هذا الأمر خيرا لي في ديني ومعاشي أو عاجل أمري وأجله فاقدره لي ويسره لي وإن كنت تعلم أن هذا الأمر شرا لي في ديني ومعاشي فاصرفه عني واصرفني عنه واقدر لي الخير حيث كان ثم رضني به Then whatever choices that Allah the Almighty will make it easy for you that is the result of istikhara Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Mustafa from Malta Assalamu alaikum Mustafa Assalamu alaikum Good evening how are you Good evening to you how are you Mustafa I'm fine Sheik I have two questions The first one is For example like maybe I'm working with some boss And 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 he pay me when he pay me the money was over and uh, i didn't replace it and uh, i heard this is i'm going to pay it your mulkiyama then can i use the advantage like example he pay me the next month i tell him ah, ah, the money is over and i return exactly what he paid me for the first time <clears throat> can i do that and then my second question is like for example in european time we pray we pray 5:30 example and i wake up around i can four o'clock and pray for the for the night prayer is it okay am i am i getting the night prayer or i have to wake up around three or two can i make it to wake up four and then i have like one and a half hour before uh, fajr thank you thank you mustafa from malta if your employer at the time of paying you normally they pay in in checks but if he happened to pay you in cash and he found extra money in your salary immediately without any hesitation no double thinking you take the entire amount back to him and say I think there is a little mistake you paid me extra what if he says you're very honest keep the money for you enjoy it it's halal now you said that you didn't tell him but you are thinking to yourself you will be asked about it on the day of judgment which is absolutely true so you're asking whether you should wait until next month and do the same and tell him that there was extra in it in order to make it up my advice is no go back to him immediately and say when I was counting the money I realized that there is extra cash in it so please this is yours even though it's been a couple weeks today is the 17th so if you're talking about the month of August still go back and tell him this is your money Number one, we don't know what is going to happen tomorrow. And whether I would live till next month to receive another salary where I can make it up for him or not. Number two, how do you know? Maybe he's testing you. So you fail the test. What matters is not failing the test before people. Rather, it is passing the test before Allah the Almighty. So my advice is take the money back to him and say, this is extra, sir. Thank you, Mustafa from Malta. As far as the night prayer, any time after you pray Isha, you can pray night prayer. Whether you pray it in advance, after Isha immediately, or past midnight, or an hour before Fajr, whatever suits your working schedule, it is known that the best time is the last time before Fajr right away. But it depends on your capacity. If you work early morning, maybe it's a troublesome for you it will be sufficient to pray in the beginning of the night then you go to sleep if you're capable to pray an hour before fajr and then you stay up this is even better assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh salheen from canada welcome to ask kuda salheen can you hear me Wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Raise your voice, please. You sound far away. Sheikh, my question is. Hello? Yes. Sheikh, my question is I know that we, if we intend to break our fast, even if we don't eat or drink anything, our fast is broken. So, is it the same case with salah? Like, if we intend to break our salah, it is broken and we have to restart our salah? Jazakallah khair. First of all, why do you intend to break your salah? Whenever you enter any salah, 
you're not supposed to leave it unless if you remember that you didn't have tahara or you have the urge to answer the call of nature or if you figure out that your body has impurities not the clothes or you didn't have wudu or you didn't have ghusl or in case of a danger that is being posed to you or to somebody else you see a blind person in front of you is about to fall or a child is about to fall from a balcony or a window immediately interrupt your salah whether fard or nafila and save that person save his or her or your life but if nothing of the above is happening then it is not permissible whether to intend to leave the salah or to actually leave the salah thank you Salheen from Canada Assalamu alaikum Ummu Ayman from the USA welcome to ask with a sister Ummu Ayman okay Assalamu alaikum Shaykh alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh um, my question is um, we recently me and my husband has been separated mm. um, it did, it's been about four months um, he did said, um, I guess he was hungry, angry, he did say he divorced me, um, and non-Muslim was next to him, so he said that you're my witness, and I divorced her, so I just want to make sure that is valid, and I don't have to do another um, thing to have this divorce valid. Umu Ayman, I'm sorry to hear that you and your husband are separated. But his divorce is valid and effective even if there was no witnesses whatsoever. So having a person next to him and a non-Muslim and asking him to bear witness is ineffective. If a person happened to divorce his wife, even in himself, divorce is valid and effective. If a person divorced his wife with a text message, divorce is valid and effective. May Allah the Almighty reconcile between you and your ex-husband if that is good for you both. Assalamu alaikum. Safar from Tajikistan. Assalamu alaikum. Safar. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. How are you, Shaykh? Great, alhamdulillah. And you? Safar, can you hear me? One Can you hear me, Shah? Yes, I hear you. Go ahead. Yes, go ahead. Please go ahead. I'm listening. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. I hear you. Say your question, please, Safar. I can hear you, Shah. It doesn't matter. Just say your question, please. Hey, subhanallah. What is your question? Okay, let's take another call and Safar, please try again. Swa from the USA. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Ask Oda, dear sister. Go ahead. Yeah, I just want to say, I just want to say, this is my first time calling, alhamdulillah. Um, we really appreciate you. You are such an inspiration to us. So. Thank you. May Allah accept. Yeah, um, my question, I have two questions actually, um, one of them is we talk about the code of dressing for the sisters, we, we usually hear um, how to dress, but then we don't know, we see some people, they, they, they have printed clothing and they also have um the some people also wear mm -hmm. black so i'm not sure which how do we actually dress as a muslim or thank yeah, you yeah we this know one. about the, yeah, mm -hmm. the aura and all that but. thank you iswa from the usa may allah bless you respected sister when Allah the Almighty said in 59, chapter number 33, Surah Al-Ahzab, Ya ayyuha al-Nabi, qul li azwajika wa banatika wa nisa'il mu'minina yudnina alayhinna min jalabibihin. 
ذلك أدنى أن يعرفنا فلا يؤذين This ayah gives us an impression that a woman should wear a khimar from the top of her head to cover her bosom, to cover her back. And then if she's wearing an outer garment, it should be loose, it should be opaque, not see through, and it should not reveal the details of the body of any color, white or black or green, all of that is permissible. So there is no particular outfit that every Muslim woman must wear. But what a woman must wear is something that covers the awrah. Aisha radiallahu anha said when the ayah, this ayah 59, chapter number 33 was revealed, so women shaqaqna mu'utahunna or uzurahun. Al-izar is a particular thawb, so they tore it apart in order to use part of it to cover their heads with it. Sometimes a woman covers up the entire body, but the clothes are very tight. That's not called hijab. Or she's covered up, but she's wearing the dress is see-through. You can see the bras, you can see the underclothes and the sleepwear. This is no hijab, period. A group of women once walked in upon Ummul Mu'mineen, Aisha radiallahu anha. And she saw one of them was wearing see-through clothes, okay, like sheer clothes. She says, are you Muslim? She said, yes. She said, if you're Muslim, then Allah the Almighty said, يا أيها النبي قل لأزواجك وبناتك ونساء المؤمنين. So if you're one of the women of the believers, this is not what a woman who is a believer should be wearing. بارك الله فيكم سيستر إسوى from the USA and thank you for calling in for the first time. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ramadu Amadu from Sayyid Yun Amadu Assalamu alaikum Amadu. Amadu can you hear me? Okay, by the time we get Amadu, I just remember some Islamic centers I visited and it coincided that they were celebrating the birth of the Prophet So I saw some women going to the masjid and in the lobby of the masjid were wearing tight clothes, tight jeans and some women were wearing short tops showing the navels and I saw other sisters smoking right in front of the masjid then I said to myself well alhamdulillah alhamdulillah they have the you know the tendency to come to the masjid but we also have to understand that even non-muslims when they go to their churches they respect the place that they are entering the idea of celebrating and commemorating the birth of the Prophet ﷺ, it should rather bring to our, our attention that he taught us certain things and he gave us some guidelines we should follow. We should utilize this guidance in our daily lives, right? And that is indeed the greatest commemoration of the remembrance of the Prophet ﷺ. So if a woman is wrapping her head like a cucumber, okay, that's a new fashion hijab. Another one, they make their hair like a big cake and this is also a prophecy of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, about such women whom Allah is angry with them. They make their hair like a, a, a dome, like a cake. Like a, a hump of a camel. And she's wearing on top of that hijab. This is not hijab. This is not hijab. These tight jeans, tight pants, tight clothes, tight uh, blouses, none of that is hijab, even if you cover up uh, your head and your hair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Milad from the USA, welcome to Ask Huda. Wa alaikum assalam. Sheikh, how are you? I'm doing great, alhamdulillah, Milad. Can you raise your voice or if they can raise the speaker in the studio, I can barely hear Milad. Yes, I, I, will, I will raise my voice. 
Go ahead. I, I just had one question. So if someone, this was asked to you before, I just want to clarify. So if someone, they have OCD when, when it comes to evil eye and envy, and they recite their card, they pray their, their salah, and, but they constantly feel the need to say Allahumma like it's like coming in the, in the way of their life. Yeah. Do they have to, and, and it's not for someone else, it's for themselves. What what it is that they see good in themselves, they constantly say Allahumma barik. Is this is this necessary or should they relax? Okay, got it, Milad. Saying Allahumma barik is such a blessed du'a, and it is one of the greatest invocations, whether to pray for yourself, your family members, or for others. You know, when somebody gets married, we pray for them with barakah. Baraka Allahu lakuma wa baraka alaykuma wa jama'a baynakuma fi khayr. Muhammad, peace be upon him, our most beloved. When there was an incident of somebody envied another person because of his very uh, fair skin, so he fell ill, etc. And Nabi found out who may have given him that evil eye or envied him. They said so and so. So when the Prophet collected him and advised him what to do, he said, Alama yaqtulu ahadukum akha, because envy is as bad as killing. Then he said, barrakt. Yani, you should have said, Allahumma barik. Allahumma barik isn't just an invocation. It's an invocation to increase barakah. So if you have a little, it becomes more. And if, it, if you have plenty, it becomes beneficial. You benefit out of it. Barakah is an amazing gift from Allah the Almighty. And also it's a means of blocking the evil eye, which a person may actually envy himself or his loved ones unknowingly and indeliberately without paying attention. So that's why saying Allahumma barik is recommended. What if I say Allahumma barik, I finish uh, two pages of the Quran, Allahumma barik, alhamdulillah, okay, okay. Uh, Allahumma barik lana fi ma razaqtana wa zukhna khayra minhu wa qina adab al-nar. You pray upon eating delicious food you like that you see. Ask Allah for barakah and for an increase. So even if the person uh, is likening himself in himself or in his position, he should say Allahumma barik. So saying it awfully, there is no problem with that. Uh, respected brother Milad, may Allah bless you and your family. Assalamu alaikum. Abdul Samad from Finland. Assalamu alaikum wa barakatuh. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, uh, Abdul Samad. I'm doing great, alhamdulillah, Abdul Samad. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa Abdul Samad, I hear you. Say your question, please. I cannot, I cannot hear you. But uh, I will ask my question, inshallah. Uh, is Bitcoin halal? Can we get a decisive uh, answer on this? Because I didn't get uh, a decisive answer. Okay. Recently, our brother, Dr. Sajid Omar, um, uploaded a video answering this question. I'm going, inshallah, to share this video with you because this is his speciality in Islamic finance and so on. So I hope inshallah will be beneficial for all of us. I think that will be sufficient. Inshallah, I would upload the video after his permission to our pages so that you can benefit out of it, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Naam. So, Algebra from uh, Philippines. Assalamu alaikum. Okay. Assalamu alaikum, brother. Can you hear me? Okay. Um, maybe we have a problem with the connection. I'm not sure. Try again, please. Tahmina Tani. Tahmina is asking a question. If my period stops a few minutes before the break of dawn, should I pray which prayer of the days? That's a good question. 
Today I remembered Aisha radiallahu anha quoting the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him as saying that if he missed the night prayer if he missed the night prayer he used to make it up during the day but instead of praying witr he used to pray shafa instead of sealing up the night prayer with the odd raka or rakas during the day he will make them all even so if you are interested to make it up because it's still voluntary even though it's an emphatic sunnah it's recommended to do it but it will not be what in a sense of one rakah or three rakahs it will be either two or four not odd rather even assalamu alaikum mahmoud as Mahmoud from the UK. Assalamu alaikum, brother Mahmoud. Wa alaikum assalam, Shaykh. Um, how are you? I'm doing great, alhamdulillah, akhi. Go ahead. Alhamdulillah, Shaykh. Thank you. Uh, Shaykh, my question is, I'm, I, I'm struggling with my parents over um, uh, one thing, which is, just now I was listening, and you said about the hijab. So my parents, my, I'm originally from Bangladesh, mm. and you know th that the uh, traditional clothes that the women wear in Bangladesh, India, Pakistan and um, it is not hijab actually it does not actually fulfill all of the requirements they understand that mm. hijab needs mm. now when I tell my my mother and my sister they don't understand properly so do you have any suggestion for me that I can explain in them properly well, basically, if you wish, you can share with them this part of today's episode, whether myself or any other scholars, because normally uh, the person finds it hard to convince his own family members with a religious duty, especially if their cultural tradition is different. So you can say, this is what Al-Azhar says. This is what the Islamic University in Medina says. This is what the Imam of the Haram says and show it to them. But besides that, you just make dua for them. May Allah rightly guide them. And every now and then you keep reminding them, but while still keeping good relations with them. Thank you, Mahmoud from the UK. Al, Al Jibral from the Philippines. I hope you can hear me now. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Go ahead, Al Jibral. Can you hear me? Okay. Well, I guess it's time to take a short break. And after the break, inshallah, we'll be happy to take some more of your valuable questions and concerns. We'll be back, inshallah, in a couple of minutes. Please stay tuned. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back to the second segment of today's show of Ask Uda. and all our phone numbers once again will be displayed on the bottom of your screen. Our first caller is Elias from the USA. Assalamu alaikum brother Elias. Assalamu alaikum brother Dr. Sabah, how are you? I'm doing great, alhamdulillah, and you? Uh, very good, very good. I'm so glad I got through. Um, I'm very happy for the work that you are doing. I just have a, a quick question, Brother Salah. Mm. Uh, I live in New York City, in New York, and my question was that a person wants to buy a vehicle, and that is his only source of income, that he wants to uh, purchase that vehicle and do it, drive it for work. and. Uh, through that vehicle he earns money uh, and the problem is that when he buys the vehicle they charge an interest of 1% or 2% now according to Islam interest is completely haram and he cannot steal anything based on interest but in the US or in the Western country there is 
uh, no possibility for you to buy a vehicle that is above 10,000 and they will charge you interest. So is it permissible for a Muslim uh, to buy this vehicle because he will need this vehicle for his house and as well as for work? Now, if the company charges interest, will that be acceptable for a Muslim to accept it or because there is no other way here to buy a vehicle? And I also have another question if you have the time as well. Naam, fadal, go ahead. And my second question is that, is it permissible for someone uh, to drink an alcohol beer of 0.05%? Because I have listened to a, an Islamic scholar, I would not mention the name, he said that it is permissible because the quantity of alcohol is so low that it will not make a person get drunk. Jazakallahu khairan Ilyas. First of all, uh, paying interest, as you just mentioned, is not permissible in Islam, whether to pay or to charge. And uh, having been lived in, in the States for so long, I know that there are other ways around. The first is to be financed by the uh, car dealer itself, and it is possible. So the car dealer may calculate how much interest he wants to add and he adds that and he gives you a final cut or a final price where you paid on in installment. Uh, fact number two, of course if you have the cash you can pay cash, but if you don't, maybe you can take a loan from uh, any of the brothers in the community <clears throat> or buy a used car. As a matter of fact, this is what I have been doing and Alhamdulillah I've never ever taken a loan with interest uh, whether in the States or otherwise. Having said so, I'd like also to add in case of necessity where it's a matter of surviving then it becomes permissible. So it is my duty to teach and to say while answering this question if somebody doesn't have money to pay the rent he will be kicked out. If somebody doesn't have to, the money to pay for an operation for himself or any of the family members, and no one is willing to give him a goodly loan with all the guarantees, then take it from the bank and pay the interest and there is no blame upon you because it's a matter of a necessity. But under regular circumstances, no, it is not permissible. When I go to your second question, when I go to Walmart, HEB, or, you know, no need to mention names, any of these department stores. And I pick up a drink and I know that it has alcohol, even if it is an insignificant percentage, is not permissible. The answer that the person has suggested is in case of medications, which may have a small percentage of alcohol as an excipient or as a vehicle. And meanwhile, there is no alternative. But for me to go and buy a drink, or buy food which was cooked with alcohol even though it evaporated or most of what it evaporated a t-bone steak is marinated in alcohol and it is grilled already so alcohol has evaporated only small percentage may remain it's not permissible due to the fact that it's najis it's impure and we're not allowed to consume any impurity also Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said or taught us the golden rule in respect of drinking. If anything that you drink a lot out of it and you get intoxicated, then a small sip of it is forbidden. Al khamru ma khamar al aql. What is khamr? Anything that makes you intoxicant. If you drink a large amount, you get intoxicated, then a small sip is as forbidden as a whole barrel. May Allah guide us to what is best. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Adam from Singapore. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Okay, go ahead. The question I have is uh, with regards to honoring contracts uh, in Islam. So, uh, where I am from, uh, we are forced to go into national service for two years. So we have to leave our jobs and uh, join this service and our salary is reduced by more than uh, half and uh, during that time we are not allowed to take on extra job or part-time job as well. But uh, I was thinking whether because I am in the situation where I have been forced to uh, undergo this, do 
I need to honor this because on the weekends uh, my time is free I don't have to do this service itself I was wondering whether I can do part-time jobs to just earn that income so that I can save up for important events like Mecca or buying a house inshallah yeah, Jazakallah khairan Adam we differentiate between a contract that you take uh, upon your own self willingly and you sign up for it then you must adhere to the conditions of the contract and commit yourself to what you agree to but sometimes a person didn't choose doesn't want to serve in this place but it is an obligatory and over the weekend I may uh, do anything as a freelance it's not affecting my job I'm not revealing any secrets so from an Islamic perspective as long as I'm not hurting anyone and I did not willingly agree to that you're not blameworthy Allah says yet I do not advise anyone to break the law of the land because you don't want to put yourself in trouble may Allah keep you safe and protect you all Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Umayyir from the UK, welcome to Ask Oda. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. I hope you are well. Alhamdulillah, Umayyir. I'm doing great. Thank you for asking. Go ahead. Alhamdulillah, Sheikh. I have a question that concerns me. Um, I work in an advertising company and uh, I work in advertising technology and out of a hundred of advertising campaigns maybe ten, nine are alcohol or gambling. Now I've spoken to my boss to try to reduce this. He, they said they will try to reduce as much as possible but maybe it's still inevitable. Um, the, the, I don't deal with any of the dealings or any of the contracts or anything like that. It's just technology. I press the buttons and then it goes live on the air on the television on all over the UK. Mm. So uh, I've, uh, I'm concerned whether uh, is this uh, maybe out of a hundred, maybe just eight, nine percent, maybe eight or nine campaigns in the, in the whole year, yeah. in the whole month. Uh, but this is a big concern well, for me. I, I spoke. Uh, sorry, I'm listening. Go ahead. I've spoken to the boss to say, listen, please, you know, my Islamic values, please reduce this. They said, okay, from next month we will try. Maybe you can, you know, but. I still feel, because of the nature of the work, I will say it's still a little bit inevitable. Maybe it will be reduced, maybe one or two, you know, but uh, it's still... Uh, Shukran. Uh, yeah, Umayyir. Jazakallah. Khair. Now, I got your question. If I work in a field, 10% of it is haram, then 10% of my earning is haram. And obviously, it's not about taking 10% of my salary and donating it. But it is about advertising the haram so everyone sees the ad and gets excited about it purchases the alcohol that was in the ad because of that I share part of that sin so as a person who guides people to goodness receives a similar share of the reward likewise a person who misguides people or guides them to something that bad he shares the sin as well that's why we say if there is any way you can work even if you're working for the same company but in a different field you're doing the ads of the different advertisement which is halal but pressing the button to air something haram Allah says wala ta'awanu ala al-ithmi wal-udwan do not cooperate or help in committing any sin or transgression. So is alcohol permissible? No. Not even in the UK. Anywhere for Muslims, alcohol is haram. What about if I sell it to non-Muslims and I advertise it to non-Muslims? And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, in Allah idha harrama shay'an harrama thamana. It's as simple as that. Anything that Allah has forbidden, then its price is forbidden as well. We all know how many people and Nabi Sallallahu included in the curse and the prohibition of dealing with alcohol. To the extent that the carrier, the waiter, the seller, the buyer, the uh, person who serves it, the one who carries it, whether a truck driver or a waiter, the vendor, 
or the uh, guests in the restaurant and that's why anything that deals with alcohol or haram food or drink should be avoided may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to what is best assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Sister Amna from the UK. Ya Shaykh. Naam. Assalamu alaykum ya Shaykh. Wa alaykum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sister Amna, go ahead. Assalamu ya Shaykh. I want to find out about supplication in sujood. Um, after Subhana Rabbi al-A'la, can I go straight away and start supplicating? For example, Rabbi Kshuli, Wadi Wali Daya, Wadi Mumini, Nayome Fumul Hesab. Or there are some praises that I have to say before I bring in my supplication. That's my first question. My quest second question has to do with Duha prayers. Somebody told me that um, if I cannot do it, continuously if i cannot do it every day and then i don't have to start it at all the two rakats of duha i want to find out how true that is thank you very much you most welcome sister amina from the uk the practice you're doing in the salah after saying subhana rabbi al-a'la a couple times three times then you start of making dua is absolutely perfect but even though I don't make praises and introduction, you've already made it since you said Allahu Akbar, Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik, wa tabarak asmuk, wa ta'ala jadduk, wa la ilaha ghayruk, you've praised him. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Maliki Yawmiddin, these are all words of praises, exaltation and glorification. In sujood, especially in the Fard prayer, you don't have that time. To start over the praises again. So after saying Subhana Rabbi Al A'la, and this is also a word of praise, you can say Rabbi Ghfirli wa li walidayya wa li mu'minina yawma qumul hisab, or any of the supplications that you desire to say in your sujood. The Duha prayer. I can pray it today and I skip it for five days. I can pray it for five days and I skip it whenever. I'm not feeling well or I woke up late or I'm musafir. To the extent of the emphatic which is highly recommended, you do it whenever you want to. And if you quit, it doesn't nullify your previous nawafil. If you want to resume, you will be rewarded. You skipped it. There is no reward. But if you do it, you will be rewarded. And this is a major difference between al-fard and al-nafila. So sister Amina, whoever told you that about the duha was not very accurate they need to study and learn about the nawafil pray whenever you want to any sunnah any nafila you'll be rewarded and if you don't pray it you're not blameworthy but you just simply missed its reward assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh sauda from tanzania assalamu alaikum sister sauda Go ahead. So, uh, my question is about the letter Sod. Sod. Hmm? The letter Sod. So, how I was taught, and most of the people I know, it's, it's called Swad. So, is it okay if I say Swad in the Tashahud or in the Quran? Swad, the letter Sod, it is Sod, not Suad. It is Sod, not Suad. Such as, In Allah ma'as sabirin, wasbir wa ma sabruka illa billah, wa aqim as salata tarafayin nahari, wa aqim as salata tarafayin nahari, as salah. So the proper pronunciation of the sad is sad. We know in the articulation points to find out the exact way of articulating any letter, you put a jazm on top of it, sukun, I mean, and precede it with an alif with fatha or kasra. So as, as, 
us it's not suad it is sad got it sister sauda i hope yes so i should say sad exactly Sod. is it okay sad now and there is a surah i should say sad right in tashahud yes like what there's a sad there so well, yeah. say, of course there is Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammad that is in tashahud okay and there is a whole chapter in the Quran it is known as surah sad wal Quran is the dhikr barakallahu feekum sister sauda i think we can take one more call for the day assalamu alaikum muhammad from qatar assalamu alaikum alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh sheikh how are you alhamdulillah muhammad and you Muhammad, go ahead. Okay, Chief, I have a question regarding uh, Salah, mm. so specifically Salah to Jum'ah. Mm. Uh, with the current uh, circumstance or the current situation uh, throughout the world, especially with this Corona, so um, usually the masjids on Jum'ah, they close quite early because obviously people go early and uh, the mosque closes quite early. And obviously here in, in Qatar and all of the Middle East, it, the temperatures during the Dhuhr time is just so hot. And sometimes we have to wait maybe even 40 minutes in the hot sun until the khutbah starts. So what is the ruling uh, for this? Is it is it better? I mean, do we have to stay within the premises of the masjid or is it okay for us to come back home and then again go back to the masjid? Uh, when it is closer to thank the, you uh, Muhammad from Qatar what I do and what I love to do if I'm not giving the khutbah I go as early as possible I sit inside the masjid I enjoy the air condition and I enjoy the extra reward for attending the masjid early and walking to the masjid and it is very unfortunate in many masjid the imam says assalamu alaikum and half the masjid is empty and people like to come just to attend the prayer. Now, with the precautions that were taken, wearing the mask and using the sanitizer, it's perfectly fine to pray in the masjid. And you see, everywhere in the Muslim world, they are partying, celebrating, and having big uh, dancing and singing parties where tens of thousands of people are attending. They are not worried, only worried about the masjid. It's, uh, what a shame. So here, what I would advise you with, Salatul Jum'ah is compulsory. So if you make a, a little more effort and you travel to the masjid a little early so that you can sit inside the masjid, that's a win-win situation, alhamdulillah. If you drive by to the masjid and you found the masjid is closed, they don't have fans outside, they don't have shade outside, you can sit in your vehicle and turn on the AC until the iqama is cold if you fear that you'll get a sunstroke. La darara but what if they have a shade and they have big fans and mist then you should sit with them to attend the Jumu'ah prayer where you ended up may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to what is best and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable us to be better believers once again I would like to remind you brothers and sisters in many countries tomorrow is Ashura in KSA Ashura is on Thursday and alhamdulillah shukla in any case or fasting taswa and ashura so do not skip fasting tomorrow and day after tomorrow those who are fasting today because tomorrow is ashura they're doing also a great job and it would be also nice to fast on thursday as well may allah accept from all of us aqulu qawli hada wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa sallallahu ala sayyidina muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Allah is my heart's speech. Your mercy is what I beseech. Keep in my heart your remembrance and in your deen allow me to advance. Help me in my quest. Permit me to pass the ultimate test. Help me in my quest. Permit me to pass the ultimate test Allah is my heart's speech Your mercy is what I beseech Keep in my heart your remembrance And in your deen allow me to advance
Thank you.